Hey y'all, it's your girl Monet and you're watching The Exchange Rate, a talk show that's sure to make the hairs on Jackie Cox's chin stand up. <laughs> Today is gonna be legendary because we're chatting with two of the stars from the hit show, Deshaun and Laomi. Mm. Then later, the RuPaul's Drag Race veteran Angina is stopping by to dish about the scolding reviews she said about some of her castmates. Miss Thing. <laughs> but first, let's get into the gig. Hit it! Ah, now listen, now as the cities have began to like reopen, like I feel like the world is like finally like getting back to some sense of normalcy. Like I'm seeing pictures of people on beaches, people going out to brunch. I will say the other day I was biking in um, Harlem, not gonna say where, but I was biking by a restaurant, and keep in mind, New York is still on phase one. We are not uh, like a Florida that never left phase four, okay? We are still on phase one. And I was driving down a very popular avenue, and in a restaurant, people were like sitting in the restaurant drinking cocktails. Like that is against the rules, against the law. But at the same time, we were all just <laughs> like 50,000 people <laughs> marching in the street together. So it's like, what is right? But that was for, like a good thing. Y'all are just in the bar kicking, kakaying for fun and now it's about fun now it's about social distancing and if we keep it up we're gonna end up like florida florida since they opened the beaches they have 2,000 new cases girl like we cannot be this crazy people we cannot go back to the old way of life we have to keep on pressing forward and i'm pressing forward by staying at home and i told y'all I'm, I'm like reorganizing my apartment i'm recondoing i am feng shuiing i attempted to put um, to mount my TV to my wall. If you see my Instagram, I'm always videotaping that big TV in my living room. Well, I tried to put it on the wall. I got me a little wall mount, and I, bitch, I got literally, I held up one screw up the box. I was like, oh, hell no. So I called the task rabbit. He came by. He was very hot. He was very funny. He hung it up. And then here's where it gets juicy. So I was kind of like flirting the whole time. He'd be like, oh, yeah, I can help you lift that. I can help you with that screwdriver, sir. And then he left, yada, yada, yada. He didn't take the bait, or so I thought. Then I get a text. I'm literally read the text, the, the text message to y'all. Hey, it's me. By any chance, did I forget my small white box? Question mark. Then I said, yeah, there's a small white box here. You want to come get it? <laughs> and he says, yes, I really need it, but I'm not around. We'll give you a call before. I said, okay. Then he never responded. And then two days later, I was like, Hey, I still have that white box. You needed it today. <laughs> he never responded. That's so sad, girl. I thought that was going to be my thing. Girl. I was so, so, so excited. I'm like, here we are. So, Mr. TV Man, if you're out there, <laughs> you know who it is. Um, and, yeah. And we also had the first Black Bachelor on the eve of... This is the eve of Juneteenth. We finally have a Black Bachelor. So, life is going great. Everything is good in the hood in Wakanda. And speaking of Wakanda, Beyonce is about to be part of Wakanda because she is about to be your new storm. Or so we think. So the rumor is, not the rumor is, Beyonce has signed a deal with Disney, a $100 million deal for three things with Disney. So now everyone is speculating that it's Black Panther 2, but I cannot imagine a reality of Beyonce playing Storm. Like, no shade. We Y'all know I love Beyonce. That's my girl. I love her. Beyonce is not a storm. Beyonce would not do their role justice. Like, Halle Berry is a way better actress than Beyonce. I mean, she's Oscar winning. And Halle Berry was a bad storm. But then it's like, what's that the script? What's it Halle Berry? I don't know. I just know that I don't want to... I, there's not a reality that I want Beyonce to play storm. She did Nala. That was not great. Um, I did like her in Obsessed. Did y'all like Obsessed when she played the wife of, um, of, of, of Idris Elba and the crazy white lady trying to kill them? So she was good in that. And I liked her Cadillac Records. That's another controversial opinion, but I thought Beyonce was great in Cadillac Records. She played Ella Fitzgerald. It was so good. But I don't want her to play Storm. Like, no, that is not what the culture needs. Um, uh, they're saying that as part of the deal, they're also trying to get her team to agree to have Beyonce voicing some of the new documentaries coming to Disney+. Plus. Now, they're doing this because Meghan uh, Merkel just voiced for the Elephant documentary they did. I mean, I could hear Beyonce do that. I've listened to her give that commencement address to the class of 2020. And it's just like, the whole thing is just like this. And it was just 10 minutes of Beyonce like, and you can do it. And I know <laughs> that you have the power. Like, 
girl, say my name or just, or just, and and that was kind of like Nala too. And Nala was just kind of sitting there like, yeah, Simba, we shouldn't go there. Uh oh. Like, I just, it just didn't work for me. So I don't think, I don't see Beyonce as that. I mean, the only thing, other thing I can see Disney probably using her as, y'all know the Hercules, um, the live action is coming. She might be one of the muses. I wouldn't be mad as Beyonce is the head muse. It's not my number one choice, but I would not be mad at it. So maybe that's what she's doing. She probably has something to do with Hercules. Like, I want to go would assume. But, you know, Beyonce is worth $400 million. Just to put it in, in, into perspective, um, she earned $81 million in 2019, and she was number 41 on the list of richest women. I mean, number 51. Who are these other... How much are these people making? That makes you think, like, girl, people are fucking rich in this country. That means 49 million people, 49 people more, more than Beyonce made way much more money. That is cray cray. Her and Jay-Z together are worth $1.3 billion, though, compared to Kim and Kanye's $510 million. So, <laughs> Juneteenth, I gotta look good about that. Guess me. Black money matters. And, uh, but you know what don't matter? The fucking police budgets. And we're about to shut them down. As if you, unless you've been living under rock, defund the police has been trending for weeks now. And it's causing a lot of people to ask a lot of questions, including Meghan McCain. So on The View, Kamala Harris was a guest on The View, and uh, Meghan McCain kept on pressing her about what defund the police means. Like, she's like, she's like, she, <laughs> Meghan said, this is something that is new to me. But I assume it's removing the police. That is literally not what defunding the police means. Like, and uh, Megan McCain has the entire staff at The View at her beck and call. Okay, not the entire staff, but you know what I mean. The producers and stuff to, like, help explain these things to her. So I'm like, girl, you can figure out what defunding the police actually means. So so, so Kamala Harris responded, and she said, there is a need to, to reimagine how we do public safety in America. And she brought up some really good points of what defunding the police actually means. Like, it's like... In most cities, over one third of a city's budget is goes towards the police. Y'all know what that means. In most, in some some cities, that means two hundred and fifty million dollars. Like in the LAPD, two hundred fifty million dollars will be directed to black communities. And the Minneapolis, um, they have they have started the process of disbanding their police department. And again, that means a lot of it means taking the funds that you are giving to police and using it in using it in um in in, in other ways in other communities in other ways to best help you and me instead of buying them riot gear and buying shit that they don't fucking need. There's no reason why police should be walking around a community in full-on war gear. Like, there is literally no need. You know what I mean? So that's th- 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 the things that, 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 that are thought of when you, th- when you say defunding the police. So Sonny Hawson chimed in and she said, it means taking some of the funds that are typically one third of, of, of the budget of a city and giving some of those funds to service things like education and mental health resources. Like the San Francisco PD. They will no longer um, use police to respond to non-criminal calls, i.e. mental health, homelessness, school discipline, neighbor disputes. Like, how many videos have you seen online of police being called to a school for kids fighting or whatever, and then you see these, like, grown-ass police officers body slamming, choke slamming, holding guns to 13 and 14-year-olds. Like, there is literally no need for that. So things like that are what people mean when they say defunding the police. Taking the police... And, and police money out of out of certain situations so that they don't escalate and make them bad, you know? One of my things I think they should do is that if you are a police officer who is convicted of homicide or murder or whatever or or some egregious crime, they that money that is going to service the family or whatever comes directly from your pension fund. I bet you I bet you you won't see them doing that shit no more. If we are taking the money directly from their pension, from their retirement, oh, we will see police crimes decrease substantially. I, I, I will, I will bet you this iPhone XS Max that that would happen. But yeah, so those are some of the things that I think can be done by defunding the police. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. And um, someone who is about to defund Compton ass. Well, he, I, he's not on a personal mission to do that, but he's making some. He is speaking out. Girl, let me tell you, this Black Lives Matter movement, people are speaking up. Andre Leon Talley. If you don't know who Andre Leon Talley, this is him right here. He's known for always being being in these like elaborate dusters or pashminas or coats with like the gray little afro, like the glasses, and having that like Louis Vuitton box thingy. Like that is Andre Leon Talley. He is like 
a permanent fixture in fashion, when you think of fashion. So he is um, calling out Anna Wintour for her statements addressing this, the, the discriminatory culture at Vogue. And he did so during um, the Sirius XM Sandyland show with Sandra Bernhard. Oh, Sandra Bernhard is that? You're so vague. You probably think the song gets about you. Well, her show. By the way, who wants to listen to Sirius? Like, who? Maybe it's because we're in New York City and we don't, like, typically drive cars. But I guess if you, like, have a car, you probably have a subscription. And I know we just had somebody from Sirius. But I mean, who wants to listen to Sirius? Anyway, so he addressed it all on her show. Um, and he compared it to the NFL commissioner Roger G- um, Goddell's apology, which he never mentioned Colin Kaepernick and say that they were wrong, but like not really. And um, he's like, he, Andre's saying that you need, Anna, Anna needs to name what your mistakes were and own up to it. And um, he, this, this is what he fully said. I want to say one thing. Damn, Anna Wintour is a colonial broad, <laughs> which is an Andre Lea Talley way of calling her a bitch. Uh, she's a colonial dame. She's part of an environment of colonialism. She is entitled, and I do not think she will ever let anything get in the way of her white privilege. Damn, girl, that is pretty heavy. Um, he is he is he is taking the Black Lives Matter motto, "Get off our necks," to take your Manolo stiletto off my neck. This is pretty scathing. I, the backstory is that Anna, why do, why do people call her Anna, like Elsa and Anna, uh, very let it go, a frozen. Get it, frozen! Um, Anna Wintour and Andrew Leon Talley fell out because he was dismissed from his job of hosting, like he used to host the Met Gala, like that was his thing, but they hired some like 20 something year old YouTube influencer. And of course, Andre took great offense to it. I'm sure he hosted the Met Gala for years. It was probably the, obviously it's one of the biggest fashion moments of the year in the world. So like taking her out of it, I mean, taking him out of it, like it was probably really shady. And to go with some like 20 something year old influencer who probably has no, I, who does not like have the vast knowledge of fashion that Andre has, of course that's offensive. And it's shady, 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 shady. He said, I had suddenly become too old, too overweight, too uncool, I imagined for Anna. And in his and he has a memoir out, and he talks about all all the all of the micro and macro aggressions from Anna Wintour. He said that he was bullied by her into a weight loss program, um, by her and Oscar De La Renta, who is Oscar De La Renta. Did that really the one in the Sex and the City movie when Carrie Bradshaw had the red flower in her hair? That was that was the Oscar De La Renta dress. He also said that at one event, um, he was forced to hold her purse, and later she accused him of stealing her phone. Why would Andre Leon Talley want to steal your phone? Like, in what weird... Like, it just doesn't make any sense. Now, again, these are all alleged that he's saying these things happen. Uh, Anna Wintour has not commented on them, so we don't know if from her side is she saying it's true. But these are um, what Andre is talking about. The last thing I want to talk about is how the LGBTQIA plus community is screaming right now because SpongeBob has just come out as part of our community, even though we've all been suspecting it for years. The show debuted in 99, and it's it's all so tongue-in-cheek. Like, Mr. Krabs is the general manager, is the owner of the restaurant in Bikini Bottom. Like, people always thought that SpongeBob and Patrick were together. They thought that SpongeBob and Squidward were ex-lovers. People think that Sandy's a big old lesbian. Uh, but yeah, but SpongeBob is queer. And uh, they posted this picture on Twitter, and I just want to congratulate my little sponge prince. It is, and I think it's a good look. It's such a beloved cartoon, and it just shows people that, you know, that LGBTQIA plus inclusivity can be taught to kids and at no detriment or no, or it, it's not this scary thing for children. Like, kids don't think twice about if SpongeBob is gay. They're just enjoying his character. They're enjoying TV, and, and, and they're consuming it in a very healthy way. Uh, another thing I loved was on the show when, um, Patrick and Spongebob had to parent the little scallop together. Like, it was so cute. Like, a little same-sex moment. So, I've always loved the show. And they also tweeted me when I won Drag Race. Like, Spongebob tweeted me. My little boo. So, congratulations, baby. And happy Pride to all of you guys there at Nickelodeon. Also, Cora from um, Legend of Cora, And um, also, uh, 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 Henry Danger. Played by Michael Cohen, who is a transgendered actor. So, congratulations and happy pride to all of our Nickelodeon phase. 
Now listen, before we get into all these interviews, I think some exposing is in order. Let's take a look. Mama, they really be trying it on Postmates. Hi, 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 y'all. Welcome back. This is Exposé episode number two. Oui, oui. Voulez-vous coucher avec moi? <laughs> Listen, you know why you're here. You know what's popping. You know what's good. So let's not waste any time with the formalities of me telling y'all about what you're watching. Because if you don't know at this point, now you know. Oh my God, did y'all know that I have a boomerang? So in the fallout for the previous episode, Angina is saying that she's ready to kick ass. She ain't taking no day. She's taking no prisoners. Drag Race 101. That is the kiss of death. We are already been done knowing what's gonna happen when you start the episode with that mess. No, girl. And Juju B reveals that she voted for Mayhem to go home and Mayhem is tight, yo. Mayhem is pissed the fuck off. And then Juju ap apologizes. I'm like, girl, why are you apologizing? Like, what, 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 what? And I know what you're gonna say. Oh, but you was mad when Manila chose your lipstick. And yeah, I was. And yeah, you're right. <laughs> Oh my god, okay, so when they showed me up in the Drag Race Hall of Fame, it was kind of gaggy, it was very surreal. I was like, oh, look at her! I'm in the Drag Race Hall of Fame with Trixie, but you know. Oh, honey. So the next morning, Cracker calls on Angina. Now, y'all know that's my sis. That's my New York City sister, but girl, it is the next day. You have already had some sleep. You had your coffee. You had the lovely craft services breakfast. No, all tea, that, um, the sausage, egg, and cheese burrito that they have at Drag Race for breakfast. That shit is everything with a little Cholula hot sauce on it. And they give you the little fresh parsley that you can put in your burrito. That shit is so good. Back to the story. It felt very out of left field and very extra. I was, I was up not all night. too quite sure why she did it. Can we have this close-up of Shay's skin, though? This free shot? Shay's skin. Like, okay, Miss Kool-Aid, can you please drop the skincare routine? I love the fact that Team Blair, that they're doing weird celebrities. I think that same people like Mr. Rogers and Hannibal Lecter, like, that stuff is going to make Ru laugh. And we all know the key to fucking winning Drag Race and doing well is making RuPaul laugh. So doing, like, obscure celebrities as opposed to, like, the, the usual Henry Cavill and stuff like that. Like, no, girl, do funny stuff. Not unless you can make Henry Cavill funny, which I'm sure there is a way. But choosing Hannibal Lecter or Mr. Rogers, that's smart. That's how you play the game. And in the team, when the team's getting ready and the discussing stuff, Anjana is still talking about Miss Cracker. I'm like, all right, Miss Thing, let it go, let it go. Oh my God. Can we discuss why Drag Race makes, tries to make every que uh, queen a recording artist? Three out of the nine of them can sing. Who are the singers? Blair, Shay, and Jujubee. Like, no one else are singers. And are you putting them in a makeshift recording studio <laughs> and making them record their vocals on international? YouTube, Netflix, television. Like, that is some embarrassing stuff. Also, the really heavy choreography challenges. I'm like, some people just literally do not possess the ability to move <laughs> with rhythm. Blair saw us a little crunchy girl. I'm like, Mr. You got albums, you got like hit singles. But then, she, but then she gets it back together and it all comes together. And at the beginning, I was like, oh. And Mayhem is being really triggered by Cracker. Which, looking back, retrospectively, I don't think she has a right to be so bothered by Cracker showboating in season 10. Like, you just did not do a good job on your own. For me, I just did not do a good job in my challenge. Carol Michaels didn't make me look bad. I made me look bad because I wasn't being extra and being a good actor. You know what I mean? Like, you can't blame Cracker for working hard to make Dr. Dilby popping so that she isn't in the bottom. It's just not making sense. I I don't get it. Well, who doesn't love John Stamos? Right, America loves John Stamos. The world. I don't love John Stamos. He's too wholesome. He's too nice. He's too sweet. John Stamos is the type, like, if y'all fucking, like, he come over and he, like, wants to only do a missionary and like he wants to like cuddle afterwards and y'all hot and stick. Like, no, like get off of me. Shay, Shay literally walked into the mic, she's like, peace. Like effortlessly, just embarrassing everyone else on the cast. She was like, oh, y'all hoes think that you stand a chance in this challenge? <laughs> That's cute. Let me tell you why you don't.
<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our first two guests are two of the stars, a judge and the MC of the new hit show, Legendary. Help me welcome Deshaun and Laomi. Laomi. <laughs> <laughs> What's How going you doing? on? <laughs> doing well, doing great. Happy to be here. I'm happy to have you guys here. And now with all this, it, it must suck to have a hit show on TV and you cannot be soaking up all of the things of that. Oh, the goodness. Oh, I, That's I, I very swear, true. Out, if outside was open, you know I'd be running the streets right about now. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, like, what to about me, you? Um, what sucks the most is like, all the, for me, it's like all the craziness that's going on in the world with like the Black Lives Matter, Black Trans yeah. Lives Matter. I feel like that's what to me is affecting me the most. Um, it's hard. It's hard to celebrate anything when our lives are being taken. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And especially, um, you know, your, your lived experience as a trans woman of color, you have a very particular point of view about it. And I'm sure a lot of people look up to you in that in that situation. And, but but seeing your story on TV be told and people knowing everything about the legendary Laomi, you're giving people a lot of 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 hope. And you Yeah, also I'm trying and I and, and I, I hope that, you know, people they take that and that they they understand that, you know, there is a place for us to be loved. There is a place for us to be respected and to be accepted. And although it's taken us a lot, it's as long as we stay together and we stay true to ourselves, like it's gonna happen. So now let's throw it back a little bit. Um, so Leomi, we know you from America's Best Dance Crew. And Deshaun, you were in Vogue Evolution as well, correct? Yes, I was. Yeah, and uh, y'all had yes. lots of viral moments from America's Best Dance Crew. Did you think that from America's Best Dance Crew that you guys would arrive here at this moment? Go for it, sis. <laughs> no, honestly, no. Um, my personal experience with on America's Best Dance Crew was very tough. Um, you know, I was disrespected in front of all yes, the Yes, fucking little mama and her little you know, shady self. I was, I was, yes, I was, you know, I was made out to be this like angry person and um, it made people kind of misunderstand who I am as a person and that was kind of tough. So honestly, it's been a blessing for me to have the, you know, successful career that I've had so far. And for us to be like, for me to be on the judges panel now helping people and not bashing someone and actually finding ways to critique and, and to give people hope and to help them become better artists. Like, I feel like I could not have asked for a better moment. <laughs> what about you, Deshaun? I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's a full circle, you know, it, it, yeah. if we, you know, me and Laomi have our moments where we be like, we, we cannot believe this is happening <laughs> or we're like, yo, this is happening right now. We, we are humbled. We're, we're taking what we know we have and what we went through and also passing on to others. So like Laomi said, I'm, I'm excited to help build other artists and those within our scene to, to be bigger and better and greater. And I think then with America's Best Dance Crew, you see where we had to fight in order to get to where we are today. So yeah. I think it's a full circle. So now, so now you guys both started Vogue and very young. Deshaun, you were at 14, Laomi, you were at 15. Were you part of the same house? Like how did how did y'all get to America's Best Dance Crew? I'm sure back then it was those crazy auditions. You probably went to a casting call, but were you out voguing together before you guys made it to the show? Me, me and Naomi known each other since we were teenagers. We used to go to the same, this is a drop-in center that was um, LGBTQ friendly, definitely during that time. And we used to go there and practice our craft and, mm -hmm. and sit amongst others who act and look just like us and um, be around. So we were around for a long mm -hmm. time with each other, as well, you know? <laughs> Um, and we sort of grew up in it. We were never in the same house, which is like, you know, mm. so interesting. So we were never part yeah. of the same We tribe. were never in the same house and we never really vogue together, but yeah. me and Deshaun have battled against each other. We oh. battled against each other on the floor. We've had battles. Um, <laughs> as far as Vogue evolution, um, mm -hmm. we kind of got tired of seeing voguing everywhere and not giving the, the proper credit. And um, we got together and we're like, let's go on America's Best Dance Crew. Let's try to get out there and show the world this is where Vogue come from. And for us, it was never like, oh, we want to be famous or we want to be like, like famous dancers or we don't, we, we don't, we want the money. Like for us, it was more so we want to show with the world where Vogue came from. And honestly, you could actually, Sean, we were surprised to make it to top five. 
Mm -hmm. Honestly, we thought we was gonna get sent home the first week. first week. And when we didn't, we gagged, but that made us work harder because we felt like we had way more to prove than everybody else on the, on the, on the show. And then even during the audition process, like, you know, you can tell then people didn't know, but then it, it's sort of like, you know, it was a fishing game. Like, you guys ready for it? You guys wanna be, you guys ready? But, but we, we had a point to kind of prove, to let people know. Like, you know, again, we've seen prior seasons before of, of people doing a whole bunch of voguing stuff on America's Best Dance Crew. And that kind of shed the light to be like, okay, we need to do something about this. And, you know, we created our team and made sure that we went up there for the best representation of our culture, so. Yeah, and I mean, you guys come from great legends like 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 the ninjas who have taken Vogue and 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 the art form so globally. And you guys have done your own thing too, Naomi. You and that Nike campaign. I cannot tell you. I I remember the day I saw it. I was walking down Seventh <laughs> Avenue, two thirty fourth Street, to go to the H and M to get um a sweater and a pair of jeans, <laughs> and I saw that Voguing uh video right there at Penn Station on thirty fourth Street. How did that come to be, and how was that moment for you? Um, for me, when I got approached by Nike, I when I first saw the email and I'm like, <laughs> Nike, I'm like, what do they want with me? Like, I, I coming from the ballroom scene, being a vulgar, I never I never saw myself as an athlete, although my my work is of an athlete, honestly. And if it, yeah. if it wasn't for Nike, I I wouldn't have appreciated my talent in a different way. And Honestly, through Nike, I learned to love my body type more, being a woman of trans experience and being able to say, oh, okay, I am beautiful and I am athletic and I am strong and it's okay. Um, when they first came to me, it was just so surprising to me. And when I found out what they wanted to do, I was gagging like, wait, first of all, they did their research. They knew who I was. They knew yeah. my journey. They knew things that I, I went through within my ballroom career. And they put together this beautiful um so good. and when i shot it we shot it for like two days we did two days about 26 hours damn and we had so many crazy moments on wh while shooting like the the beginning of it when you see me catwalking down the down the street with the jacket yeah. on and uh -huh. i have on the thigh highs and literally 10 10 seconds because literally you see that for three seconds but 10 seconds in the whole street was full of people Wow. It was, we was next to the project, so you could only imagine everybody <laughs> outside oh behind me. Like, and I was gagging, but I still had to go. And you know, like moments like that, like I would have never thought that I would be acknowledged by such a huge company and for them to do it based on me. It wasn't based on like a money, you know, it wasn't on a money thing. It wasn't like, yeah, uh, let's, yeah. let's do it because she's trans. It was based on who I am, what I stand for, my brand, everything that is Laomi. Uh, Laomi! That was stern. I like that. Right? So good. <laughs> and Deshaun, you taking taking your talents to life, well, the, not probably, the biggest um, HIV AIDS a fundraiser in the world on such a huge platform, such a huge stage. Um, uh, was it everything that you thought it would be? Um, oh my God, that life ball was, oh my God, like a, just a, a complete change in the way I see things and the way I, yeah. I do things. And I have, and it was kind of a tough challenge as well too, because I was going through an experience with, um, some individuals while we're going out there and, you know, because of, you know, again, my talent because of what I've done for my community, you know, in the beginning, I wasn't actually invited to go to the life ball. Oh, and because, okay. Because okay. Of my, just saw him spill the tea. What, yes, what, 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 you know, what, what, spill what, a little what? bit of tea, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, me and, um, <laughs> me, and uh, <laughs> me and my sis, uh, Danielle Polanco, we were, oh, um, yeah. you know, we heard about the, the job and everything like that, but, you know, they had chose other people to go along for the, for the job before. Uh, you know, before the flight and everything. But once they heard that, you know, talent like myself weren't invited for such a, uh, for our community to be, you know, respected and they gave and us the platform to do it. And yeah, Laomi, oh yes, yes, I forgot that we had this problem. Oh my gosh, it's such a big scandal. Long story short, like we made our way because our talents are so freaking amazing that they put us on the job because it's like, how, how can you bring ballroom people over to Austria and, and show love and support and not bring in the people who are really doing the work outside the community to make sure it gets seen. But yeah. when we got out there, baby, did I show out. Like it was a huge <laughs> magenta carpet. The castle was just so beautiful where 
the event took place. And then we also had the opportunity to have a ball on the inside of the castle. So oh, we word. had a separate uh, section of separation, which is good conversation we're having right now because during the whole ball, I had such, I was having this roller coaster experience because of yeah. one of the individuals that I was experiencing this with. And um, I think I had one of those moments, you know, it's okay to cry. And I went to the side and I cried, let it all out rather than doing something foolish. I made a different uh -huh. choice. And that choice, uh, you know, had me to step forward and move move up and, and and do what I had to do for a job. And lo and behold, for the ball, I actually won it. And got you booked. Yep, it yeah. got me booked right now. <laughs> like, I got you booked. Ball, and I, it got me booked, and I won this whole ball in Austria. <laughs> when there were so many people inside there, it was, you know, it, oh, it was just such an amazing experience. I wish we had the time to talk about it, but maybe we can travel for some tea one day. Oh, well, well here's the thing. Listen to you. I have so much I want to talk to y'all about. When yes. we're all said and done, y'all are coming to the studio so we can kiki kaka, have a cocktail, and have, do the whole thing. But okay. I, I want to get to <laughs> Legendary. Yeah, I so I've been catching up on Legendary, and the show, listen, y'all, This they, they're not paying me to say this. I'm not whatever. The show is so good. It's so, so, so good. It tells the stories of so many Black queer people, mm -hmm. which I love. And um, but also the drama is so good. In 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 the three in the first three episodes, somebody leaves the group uh uh to <laughs> go away, and fucking um what's the name? Dominique from Pose is a literal monster on the show. <laughs> tell me, tell us about Love her. and what people can 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 ex can experience watching the show. Honestly, you can experience the the most the most thing that you're gonna experience by watching the show is you're gonna you're gonna see real true passion. Mm -hmm. You're gonna see authentic people putting their hard work and their sweat on the floor. You're not only gonna see people that are a part of the LGBT community, but you're gonna see people who also love the community because you have the House of Ninja, who is full of cisgender women, and you know that. It's so important to see now, especially with what we're going through in the world. And another thing that they should definitely expect to see is a lot of shade, honey. Uh -huh. A lot of beauty, a lot of costume. Um, production. <laughs> shade, 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 shade. <laughs> and lots of productions, honey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, I mean, you I, as I, the I, MC, you have kind of like a different, you're kind of keeping everybody together. Yeah, my, I mean that number one job as an MC, you know, it, and it's it's not just it's just not just talking on the microphone. You gotta crack the whip to make sure the judges are good, the performers are competing, the audience is entertained, the cameras are sh shooting in the right direction. Like uh -huh. it's a full detailed job, but at the same time, I think because you know I've done this basically all my life but yeah. before getting on this big platform stage. So you know when you have to speak to the judges and get it and be like, hey, 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 all right. Do, you, do the job. Let's go. Let's uh -huh. get back. All right, let's get back on track. So, um, I mean, throughout the show, you'll see at certain moments, I let the judges go. But when it's time to go, it's like, let's go. <laughs> get it. Now, I, this, I am not trying to be shady. I mean, one, keeping it 100. Sure. I definitely don't, obviously, Leomi Legendary, you, uh, um, um, I just don't quite understand what Megan Thee Stallion and no shade, Jamila Jamil have to do with this. So, I was watching it sometimes. I'm like, what are you, what are you talking about? Like, I, <laughs> was that a conscious decision to have those two cisgender women part of the conversation and as judges on the show? Want me to do it, sis? As far as, um, <laughs> yeah, go for it, go for it. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I can honestly say this one thing that, you know, you know, we've been educating everyone outside of our culture for so long about what we do and how we do things. And I think people, you know, yes, they got the message that, you know, where the bowling culture came from. Yes, Black and Latina, Latinx and everyone, how our culture, we came together and did done things. But this show is having a conversations that uh, um, that we don't speak about mostly. For mm -hmm. example, we have the all cisgender uh, group on the show and people are like, furious about it but these mm -hmm. are the things that we have in our culture that we don't discuss yeah. we don't talk about we also do have celebrities that comes to balls and judge balls sometimes as well too oh we i didn't had, know that we, you see and, and you know this is a conversation everybody don't know so you know yes it is it's infuriating to, because you want to see 
what's going on or want to make sure the culture is being represented right. And this is why we have amazing people like Leomi on the panel, the right. icon, someone who, who is open enough to have the discussion and dialogue with uh, with people who don't know. And this is our major thing. We want to have the discussion and dialogue to make sure people know who may not know. So you may have people who are uh, supporters and allies and those on the outside who may want to give you know, or give their support or whatsoever. And then you, um, and one thing we must not forget that, that, you know, uh, if we don't keep reminding people about inclusiveness, like we're inclusive to everyone. There's no one who's not, who cannot be involved. As long as you are under the guidelines of what ballroom does, there's inclusion for everyone. Now, if you try to go outside the box and turn it, we're going to turn you. So be very careful <laughs> about that. But still at the same time, this is inclusion for everyone. So yes, people may not agree. People may not understand where they come from, but you have to understand like how we are, are, are trying to like build our community as a whole and, and, and ways to do that. We invite others in. This is why, you know, we had a, a, a ballroom judge, Tyra, um, Dominique, excuse me, Dominique come in and just, you know, show ballroom what it really is. So mm -hmm. we just just let people know about the inclusiveness and it, it's, it's just not about us. It's about all of us. Work. Anything you want to add, Laomi? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I almost also wanted to add, like, we've had mock balls here in yeah. New York City before. Like in the, the past five five years, they've had mock balls here in New York City where they only have panels of celebrities. Mm -hmm. And then you have okay. ballroom time coming in and performing for them. And honestly, when those were first happening, I felt some type of way about it because I'm like, how can you showcase ballroom in front of all these people and have them judge? But it kind of gives them a sense of you can learn too. Um, I feel like as far as the show, when it comes to Megan, when it comes to Jamila, I feel like every judge on the chair brings, they they build, um, they bring a bridge between our the ballroom community and the community that they stand for and the community that they bring and the viewers that they bring. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's so important. Someone like Megan Thee Stallion, she comes from hip hop community. Hip hop community is one of the largest homophobic and transphobic Down. communities out there. So to have someone like Megan on there cheering along with us and being an ally, it yeah. gives people a sense of, okay, let me get into this too. And the show is educating on itself. So having people come and watch the show, they're gonna fall in love with something out of it. And I feel like with Jamila, she brings her own content in as well. And I love the fact that it kind of looks tough when it comes from like the ballroom people and the people who are have been dying for this to be on TV and it's like why not have ballroom people up yeah, here but yeah. honestly I would have been bored having a whole bunch of ballroom judges it would have been way too much shade it would have been way too much drama <laughs> we would have never got to them shows honey no shot we would have no never got to them shows darling <laughs> But everything happens for a reason. I feel like when season two comes, because I feel like season two is coming. It is coming. When season two comes, 100. it's really going to be so much, so much better. Yeah. You know, the first the first trial is always the first trial. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's... <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so that brings me to my next point, because in the House of Ninja this season, we see it's all cisgender women, and some from... The majority from Asia, and the, the House of Mother is from Italy, so how, but but I was saying going to the latex ball a few years ago, I realized that Vogue has now incorporated so many like different people, like a lot of people from like Romania and stuff were at the latex ball. But when I used to go, when I was like 12, 13, 14, sneaking off to Kiki functions, it did not look like that. So how do y'all reconcile that? I feel like um, with traveling across the world and yeah. traveling and teaching and sharing the culture i feel like that's how a lot of that started yeah. um before me and deshaun have traveled um, Nin, um willie was already traveling there were other people that were, were traveling here and there that were a part of ballroom but i feel like it wasn't until deshaun and i started teaching that it really really became like a really really big thing because we actually are authentic to ballroom like we we've been in we've been in, in ballroom for years you know we've battled we've learned we've We've, we've achieved so much things. We've become, we became legendary, we became iconic. Like, so for us, we've, we've helped, you know, show the world how inclusive ballroom is. Yeah. The only issue that comes with that sometimes is, especially now with what we're going through in this world is seeing how many people who love the culture and love voguing are kind of quiet about certain things that are going around the world mm. and are not out there 
you know, being allies and showing that they're here with us. And that's something that kind of triggers me and it's kind of, you know, bothered me. That's why I had to bring that up. But as far as internationally, um, it's been something that it needed to happen. There's for, there's LGBT communities all around the world. Yeah. So why not? Why not, ex- you know, why not extend what we have here? And and they, they've been, you know, it's so interesting. Uh, I always bring this conversation up as far as like, um, Years ago, you know, us thinking, you know, social media played a big part with ballroom. I'll say that. And, you know, it was able to reach places like Romania, like Russia, like all the way to Japan and China. Yeah. And Taiwan, you know, and in the beginning, we didn't know what was going on and we didn't know what was happening. And we didn't know that people were actually watching us. But, you know, I think it was very important for, you know, people like myself and Naomi to start traveling to educate as well. Because at the same time as we were going to these countries, having classes and going to balls and starting the ball scenes in these countries, like we went to these countries and helped them build their, their the culture definitely out there. You know, so it's, it's, it's again, at zero back into where it comes from, you know, going out there to teach and everyone knowing where the core of ballroom is. And so everyone right now, the latex ball is one of the biggest balls ever in the world. So Mm -hmm. it kind of brings and draws people in. And the majority of the time, people from out of the country, you know, book their tickets to come to the latex ball to participate. So um, again, our education and how we spread the culture out to where it was and how it comes back, you know, tenfold. And I will say that latex ball, that is one of the longest nights I have ever. (laughs) Girl, I got there at like, 8 p.m. and it wasn't done until like 4 a.m. I was like, this is crazy. No, ma'am. <laughs> and the bolts go later. They go later. Like that was that was amateur function compared to what we go through sometimes. The balls go. We I've been to a ball where it didn't end until about like 11 a.m. the next day, 12 p.m. No, it did not. Deshaun. Sure does. It sure does. Oh my god. Let's just Girl, be happy. Legendary does. doesn't end up that way. <laughs> And, also, and I think that also that what you guys are, by spreading the gospel of Vogue, how would you say the line of appreciation versus uh, um, versus appropriation? Like how, do, do since you guys are teaching it, that would be appreciation. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I, I think we have to, that um, that goes within the work of ourselves as well too as far as what we do so people can learn how to appreciate more rather than appropriate it and you know i, I think this is where we have to start again educating when someone who uh, who who for example Naomi and myself you know there's so many people who like to use the the grand door about the ballroom culture they'll put out there that oh my god i love vogue and vogue the next thing and they'll go out there and try to teach it but have no education behind it you right. know and rather than sitting and coming to the main source and having the conversation and talking and getting well educated and knowing knowing the place to where you can share the knowledge, people just tend to go. So what me and Laomi do, and this is something that we've done and not even had the conversations to talk to say that we know what's happening, we just do it. We go, yeah. we approach and we talk and we have these conversations. And if something is not right to our culture, we go and we, uh, we to that person, we go and talk to them, we bring them to to the place where we feel they need to be as far as like uh, sharing the culture or whatsoever. But if they're in, in the wrong place, we definitely tell them you cannot do this. Shut it you down. Know? Yeah, shut it down, definitely. We've had plenty of, of moments and occasions where we had to shut people down. But in and we try I try not to do it in the category speaking for myself and not saying that that's what we do, but like, you know, I try to meet people where they are and educate them and bring them to where they need to be rather than going them. It's like Miss Thanks, stop doing that. Don't do it. But rather doing it like do, if, do you want to be involved, then come here. If you want education, come here. You know, so yeah. it's it, we're again finding that thin line between the appropriation and appreciation. We have to know the difference between both, and it's up to us to educate those so they won't appropriate. <laughs> I, <get the show. laughs> I also love it in one of the episodes. One of them tried um, Naomi's three sixty. Naomi was like, uh, "If you if you're gonna try to land my three sixty, you better do it right." And I was like, "Shut it down." <laughs> <laughs> I love, love, love. Definitely known for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, then one of them tried to go to the back and be like, well, Laomi's not known for it, and I definitely landed. I want to see the tape. I was like, this is the shadiness and the cuntiness I Yeah, it was for. the same person. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, you know what? People should do their history before they get into certain kind of situations, because anybody <laughs> knows I'm the creator. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Well, listen, thank y'all so much. I And I stand by what I said. We need to have this conversation with some liquor and in person so we can get real down and dirty. When season two comes around, we will be together talking about the, all the things. Thank y'all so much, Deshaun. Thank, thank you, you. Y'all are legends, and I appreciate y'all spending the time with me. Thank, thank you, you so love. much. Mwah. And make sure all of y'all are watching person. Legendary on HBO Max. So good. Worth. Oh, yes, the fan. There we go. It is worth work. the eleven ninety nine of HBO Max. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, guys. Y'all, this season of All Stars is definitely off to an explosive start. And in spite of a few shortcomings, our next guest went out with her head held high. Let's welcome Angina. Hi. Hello, Miss Angina. You look so cute. Thank you so much. Thank you for allowing me to not be in drag. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, listen. After um, the drama these girls have put you through, I think that you need a break from the drag for a second. Thank you so much. But you look gorgeous, so thank, thank you for you. doing it for us. Well, you know, I have not worn a kitty cat wig in so long. I was like, um, I'm going back to my roots. This is how I feel comfortable, honey. Bitch, I would wear that out with a baseball cap as a boy <laughs> and just gag everyone. <laughs> And I have to say, on All Stars, you did, like, you, you were bald. Because, obviously, that's how we all met you in season one. You were the bald queen. And I like that you didn't feel, because I kind of caved in the pressure. Now I do all these elaborate wigs. And I'm like, people keep on making fun of the kitty cats. But you stick to your brand and, like, what people know Angina to be. I wanted my first impression on All Stars to be genuinely me. And I think mm-hmm. it was important for me to be bald for the first episode for the variety show. Yeah. Um. And and then giving them a little bit of a different dimension for the girl group, where I wore a very heavy ponytail. <laughs> <laughs> the girl groups are really good. Okay, I had I was really because okay, I'm trying to. Well, let's go back to the reading challenge. I'm trying to. I know you to be so funny. So when I saw you kind of crack under the, I was like, Angina is like you always cracking jokes. You're so quick. I was so gagged to see that you weren't that girl. Girl, let me just quote you. Anjana, no. No. Anjana, no. 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 Anjana, no. Because well, like you are so funny. I was I was like, what happened? So the the funny thing is, is like I wrote some jokes and I thought, bitch, I was the comedy queen of the world. I was yeah. cackling, I was laughing. <laughs> I know, but the thing is, is like I really thought that I was like. I thought that I had something. And it's yeah. funny because a com- a comedian writer, a comedy writer reached out to me and I ignored it and said, mm. if you're ever on All Stars, please reach out to me. I'm a comedy writer. I'm uh. like, I ignored it, right? Whatever. The day after that episode, that writer forwarded me that email and said, Ahem, ha ha ha. Uh. <laughs> and I, was like, oh I was like, I, I that know. is so shady. Which is like a read in itself. And I applaud, I applaud that person. It was Who hilarious. Was it? Tell us, tell us who we can send him a email. I don't know. I sent it to spam. I was so mad. Okay, God. <laughs> <laughs> now, going back to episode one in the channel again. Another thing, Angina, you are known for giving really great performances and being so energetic. So I just feel like a lot of the stuff in All Stars, it, it wasn't the Angina that we've seen at DragCon that we've gotten to know since season one. You're absolutely right. My performance on the first episode for the variety show was definitely something that I myself was disappointed with. And I had challenged myself for a bigger production, something that really resonated the homage to Drag Race 10 years yeah. later, doing a Drag Race type of performance. Right, which was, I lived for the camp. (laughs) When you came out in them damn power wheels, I said, first of all, I can, I was probably two years old the last time I could fit in a fucking power wheels. When you came in that car, I was like, here here she is, girl. (laughs) It's so funny because I had, I was shopping for that in another store and I, and I tried one on that actually fit me like I was a five-year-old in one, like really comfortable. <laughs> but I had to order it to ship it to, to set because oh, it was part of my luggage. Yeah. And I bought the one for toddlers. War. And you still <laughs> fit into it? 
how do I still fit into it? Gag, <laughs> oh, gag, gag, but gag, gag. Yeah, so what I'm saying is, um, unfortunately, I got so nervous. I got in my head. Yeah. And then after watching Alexis and India dance routines, I yeah. was like, well, fuck, I might as well <laughs> fucking just pack up now. <laughs> because my idea was a full choreographed dance with a theme of camp that paid homage to drag race and doing drag racing yeah and, oh i love the concept and unfortunately because i was so in my head and down on myself yeah. i think that the power i put in my performances that you normally see on stage kind of dimmed because of how hard i was on myself um with so when you were watching the talent show and after you saw derek did you think okay i was not the worst or you still were like i'm going home Yes, no, I honestly, I honestly, in my heart and heart, just not because I'm the one who did it, I really thought that my performance was very, what I thought that my performance was better than Derek's mm -hmm. because I at least still entertained the audience that was there yeah. and their reaction wasn't produced nor was it fake. Yeah. And they weren't like awkwardly just standing there trying to figure out when or where to react yeah. because I still, at the end of the day performed even though it yeah. was just like a bad drag number people yeah. were really into it because the energy was still there yeah now um th the energy that you are giving the internet i want to read so okay so miss cracker the next morning cracker comes at you f from it feel to the to the viewer watching it felt so random was it random and how did you react to it like in the moment that we maybe have not seen so you actually saw exactly how i reacted to okay. it I, okay. I i needed to process it first because i was trying to understand where it was coming from and mm -hmm. i was like is she playing mind games with me or is this really truly genuinely who she is mm -hmm. and it took me by surprise because one i may be on the lower tier that episode but it wasn't on the bottom two yeah. And I said what I said. She's not Ben Delacram. <laughs> I know. So, the white out. Oh. The white out. So it honestly, here's honestly, it took me by surprise. I didn't know what angle she was playing out. And that's when I start to have a cautionary tape around me and Cracker because I didn't know how genuine our relationship was. And to me, I felt very hurt by that because I genuinely just wanted to have an authentic relationship with every single person on set, regardless mm -hmm. of $100,000 in the line, like on mm -hmm. the line. And I was, I, when she said that, I was like surprised and I was like, whoa, okay, now I see that you're playing at it differently. Are you being genuine or are you just playing mind games? And I couldn't read it. And throughout the day, we had kind of like a distance, but we sh we spoke about it in april mm. and um you know she she apologized and i i still had cautionary tape because i was like i still don't know what happens in this episode yeah behind closed doors because i don't know what you said about me yeah and reliving that this weekend i was reminded of the hurt and i just wanted to write an open letter to her that the next time she is surrounded by queens Hopefully she would uplift them instead of beating them down when they're already on the ground. Okay, let me read for for the, for the viewers who who may have cricket wireless and your Wi-Fi is acting up. Let me read. I'm trying to put this long post on Instagram and it ended with this last paragraph. I hope next time you are surrounded by queens, whether it's a local stage or a world stage like All Stars, if a queen is feeling nervous, unsure of themselves, or losing confidence, that you choose to uplift them instead of kicking them while they are already on the ground. We can make the choice to be genuine and sisterly, even in a competition with $100,000 on the line. <laughs> oh, and then Cracker responded. She tweeted, Anjana, you are an all-star and you showed your fire tonight. Shut me up. We all say things we, we come to regret and I hope you know how, incredibly, how incredible you are. And she tagged you. Do you... Do you believe her? Are you guys friends, sisters, not so much? 
Yeah, I think it, like I said, it took for me, it took a little bit for me to open my lane for it to be a two way street because I didn't know where we were as far as our relationship and if it was really genuine or not. Yeah. But after speaking to her this weekend, I realized now that she is really sorry for how she treated me and what she said. And I understand everybody's telling me it was a competition. She's playing the game. And again, I understand that. But there is something in a competition that still can be like, like there's still humility or, or being, or being authentic. Like just because you want to win a hundred thousand dollars doesn't mean that you have to beat that girl down when she's already on the ground. And that's really what I felt like. That's how I felt with her on that first and second episode. And so I just wanted to let her know that. And now that we've spoken, um, we are moving forward in our relationship. And she she read she read my message. She understood my open letter and I have accepted her apology and we're moving forward. It's just at the time and reliving it and rewatching it, it really did hurt me. Yeah, I feel that, I feel that. And then also to go home in such an early spot, and you and when we did um the the all stars Kiki we did you made did you really have two options for every runway look? Okay, so yes, um, that is cr <laughs> how did how did you fit all of it? How did you bring all of it? Well, the thing is, is I'm so little that one small outfit is a small. <laughs> I did plan for two different types of outfits in some of the runways. Okay. Not every single one, but yes, I did have three options for my finale, and I ended up wearing one as my entrance outfit. Work, which was so good, by the way. That girl, you. that alone was eighty pounds. Twenty five. Twenty five pounds. That yeah. is crazy. I was in that outfit for like nine hours, and it fucking Ugh. hurt. I'm sure all the bells, all the whistles. Now, also throughout the season of All Stars, you made it a point. To pay homage to your heritage, have you yeah. have you been have you been receiving that? Has the community been receiving that from you? Yeah, it's been so much love and support from my country. One of the things that I said, if ever I go back on All Stars, is to really represent my country and my culture. Um, I had a reconnection with my family two years ago when I visited the Philippines. And um, and I'm just happy that I got that experience. And then I was able to bring some of that artistry on the world stage like All Stars. And I'm so glad that my Kababayans, which is my people in the Philippines, are accepting Ooh, it. Really well, so say that again. Say that again. Let me hear it. My Kababayans. Can I say, if I say that, is it offensive? No, not at all. Kababayan is like your friends or your like family or like your neighbors. So like Kababayan. Kababayans. Kababayans. Thank you. You said it right. Kababayans. Also, um, we did a little research. <laughs> um, your the your drag name before Angina was Peek Peek. <laughs> Peek Peek Galore, which Peek Peek means vagina. <laughs> uh, vagina galore. Honestly, girl, it's, same. It's thing. It's it's peck peck galore. Oh, peck, peck peck galore. Yeah, so it was very much inspired by pussy galore, obviously. Right. But I wanted like that hard tongue Tagalog, which is my language, like accent added to it and make it really like me. But uh -huh. then I was like, I don't want three names. I just want one. <laughs> that is a lot. Yeah. And so I came up with Angina, which is still an homage to the female Aina, which I wish I had. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, we got to know about your beautiful partner uh, um, through, through through draggers and stuff. Are you guys still happily married and lovely? We are. We're happily, and like I said earlier, monogamously married. And, <laughs> I'm, and I mean, it's been 10 years this year. 10 years, you? girl. I it's can't get like 10 minutes. One it's 100 in gay, okay? <laughs> so um, he, the best way to describe it is he balances my crazy and he loves all of my imperfections. And that includes my really bad temper. So <laughs> if he hasn't left seeing me at my worst, then I think he's gonna stay for my best. And I, it's, it's forever. I'm very happy with Brian. What can we expect next from Angina? Even, even though you're an early out, again, you're a queen with so many talents. What's coming next for you? Well, uh, before Miss Rona was being a bitch, I actually <laughs> had a really big plan to do a YouTube series and 
Um, Mary, my two favorite things, as you know, maybe you don't. I was a visual merchandising manager. Oh, so yes. Yeah. So I was going to do a makeover interior design show on a budget with some of my drag queen friends. And the premise was, I have $600. I'm going to come here. Come here. Come here. I will do it. So basically, it was like, I have $600. Can you make over my living room? And it's about being creative, partnerships, like going to the thrift store and reupholstering a sofa, like you can do so much on a budget. And what I started doing was I started doing it on my home first and the mm. Instagram is on Gina home. And mm. um, so I'm hoping that marrying my talents from what I used to do as a career to what I do now as a career will hopefully come into fruition once I'm able to get a team together to do it. And the other thing is I'm starting to kind of get my hands dirty on producing shows. Okay. Um, so um, I had one scheduled for this year. Unfortunately, it got moved to next year. Yeah. But it was it's it's it's, it's I want to do um, I want to do a tour in different countries and hopefully um, be able to have drag race girls. That's not normally on rotation for these tours because there's so much talent in the drag race world mm -hmm. that I want them to have the same exposure that all the other queens do and i want to be able to help in that because the talent is tremendous yeah so many girls so many girls uh angina well thank you so much for chatting with me again even though your time was shorter than all stars bitch this hgtv show that's about to get picked up hello i can't wait to watch it on on, on my little cable tv can you be my season finale let's just say you're gonna be my season finale <laughs> And Let I wear that yellow think. dress that everybody will read me for for going to season eleven. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm gonna come in there in a leotard with a broom, just like you, and start sleeping, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> I'm trying to thank you so much, tell Ryan. I said, "Hey, girl," and I can't wait to see you on HGTV. We speaking it into bitch. existence. Yes, and you have to tell the universe, then it will happen. Hello, that's how I got I'm this show. I'm okay with it starting on YouTube. Amen. Thank you, Angina. Bye, I love you. Here. Love mm -hmm. you. Finito, that is it. The show is over. Listen, if you want to get some um, exchange rate merch, if you go on my website, we have the pink exchange rate pin. So go and order those, and you can be an official exchanger. Thank you all so much for watching, and remember to always keep your currency in check. Mwah.